हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय अंबर ओबिसेंसेस ऑल गुरुश टू श्री लप्रभुपाद ऑल गुरुश टू यू वंचिया कल्पतरु भेष्य कृपा सिंधु बेवचे पतितानम पावने बियो वैष्णवी बियो नमो नमः सो हरे कृष्णा डियर डियोटीज uh welcome to bhakti samba sangha conference call um, today we are very fortunate to have his holy name the holy swami maharaj to enlighten us on the uh, bhugar uh, topic of glories of uh, bhugar goswami so um, welcome to the call maharaj i will hand over the call to you now hari krishna um gyan timirandasya gyanarjana salakaya चक्षु उन्मीलितं तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोविस्तम स्थापितं येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदम वयम् तदाति स्वापदातिकं मा ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण कृष्णाय भूतले श्री भक्ति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी इति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी पुच्छारिणी पश्चातिपसिंधुपेवचापतिता पावने व्यो वैष्णवे व्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नीचानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासवी गौर भक्तविंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो भूगर्व गोस्वामी एंड ऋषि काशीवर पांडे हैव बोथ डिसअपियर्ड ऑन द सेम डे टुडे बट वी फाइंड दैट coming the vice novel literatures uh and this is complete there is not a lot of information on bugarbo goswami <clears throat> we know practically nothing about his activities <clears throat> except that uh, he was a close friend of lokanath das goswami who also we find very little if anything and about his life and activities <clears throat> what we know is bugarva goswami was a disciple of uh, gadadhar pandit and uh close close's companion that they say they were inseparable is lokanath das goswami <coughs> excuse me <coughs> um in the uh, shri shri radha um gokulananda temple in vrindavan the samadhi mandir bugarva goswami exists along with the samadhi mandir of vishwanath chakravarti takor it's in the courtyard there and we know that gokulananda didi was established by by uh, lokanath das goswami uh, the infer as my as i mentioned the information is nothing about his life chaitanya charitamrita says that in, in his identity in from krishna leela he was prema manjari um, and he disappeared on this day which is the fourth day of the bright moon fortnight of the month of kartik <laughs> and that's all we have on bugarva goswami um we can speak a little bit about uh, kashivara pandit which is a lot more information which is also today's disappearance day Uh, Kashivar Goswami was a brahmachari and uh, it says that he was uh, Krishna's servant 
his name was in previous Leela, he was actually a gopi. Uh, let me see what is the name here. I have it mentioned here. Um, well, I'll have to uh, do some research to find out Kashiwara's. But interesting, Kashiwara was born in the village of Chaitra in the district of Hooghly, and uh, his father was Vasudev Bhattacharya. And he came in the Vaishya Gagotra. He was also had the title of Chaldari. <laughs> he was a disciple of Ishwara Puri. In other words, he was Lord Chaitanya's god brother. And uh, also Govinda was also Lord Chaitanya's god brother. Uh, Ishwara Puri after the disappearance of Madhavendra Puri, Ishwar Puri had, uh, well, sometime after that, had instructed both Govinda and Ish and Kashivar Pandit to go and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, it's not the etiquette, nor is it permissible for a god brother to become a servant of their god brother. In other words, god brothers don't become personal servants of their own god brothers. They may do service out of their own goodwill, sweet will, their own uh, desire. But as a formal thing, one cannot make one's god brother their servant. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu received the message that Govinda, who came first, and Kashivara followed, were coming to assist him in his personal service, because that was the instruction of Vishwara Puri, um, Lord Chaitanya became a little bit disturbed and also uh, somewhat <clears throat> Uh, averse to the idea, knowing it was against the etiquette to accept one's god brother as one's personal servant. So he went to Sairavoma Bhattacharya for some advice. Of course, the Lord knows. But still, playing the role of a perfect disciple, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to uh, Sairavoma Bhattacharya and presented the problem. Bhattacharya agreed, yes, it's, it is against scriptural statements to accept one's god brother as one's personal assistant. It's the same with god sisters, they can't do that either. Uh, but, and to accept one's god sister as one's personal servant and vice versa. In other words, personal servants or personal assistants have to come in the realm of disciples are people who are not in the category of God brothers or God sisters. So Bhattacharya, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, yes, it's correct, but there's another injunction, which is the instructions of the spiritual master, which is a higher principle. So accepting the higher principle, you should accept the fact that they have come on the order of your Guru Maharaj Ishwara Puri. And so based on that, Lord Chaitanya accepted that. Now, Govinda, we know, was his personal servant and used to do a lot of the menial things to carry out. He would prepare Lord Chaitanya's bed. He would arrange for prasadam. He would do all the little services that was there. for. for but Kashivar was a little different. Kashivar was a powerful, very strong personality. And his presence was quite uh, noticeable. <laughs> In other words, he was a big person and very strong. Um, so one of the services that he had, which was an important service, is that when Lord Chaitanya would go, uh, people would sometimes crowd around and make it difficult for Lord Chaitanya to pass, sometimes going to the Jagannath Temple when the Lord wanted to see Jagannath. 
Now, people would make it difficult and they would always running up to him, touching his feet or doing something. Uh, and that obstructed his passage. So Kaisivara was there. We also call him the bodyguard. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada had one also. He had a few different bodyguards like that. And that happens sometimes with the spiritual master. They have to. Uh, I know a couple of my god brothers who have good bodyguards because it's required. Otherwise, it becomes difficult. And sometimes bodyguards are there to keep away inimical or persons who want to harm the spiritual master. We have an example of one time when uh, Prabhupada was coming out of the airport and he was walking with a small group of his disciples on his way to his vehicle. And there was one person who was really, I guess, against Prabhupada. So he wanted to do some harm to Prabhupada. So he started to run real fast and he was going to bang and crash into Srila Prabhupada on the run. Just at the last minute, Prabhupada's bodyguard noticed this person coming and he blocked his way and the person ran into the bodyguard. And of course, he fell away. <laughs> so yeah, we had even examples of sometimes people would try to do harm to Srila Prabhupada or cause him difficulties so like that. So Kashivaram uh, was the bodyguard of, uh, of Mahaprabhu, like that. Um, and he did his service as well. Let me see here. He would also serve, he was one of the seven persons, this was who would serve Mahaprasadam to the devotees at the Rathiyatra Kirtan. The others were Surabh Dhammadar, uh, Jagadananda, Dhammadar, Gopinath, Baninath, and Shankar. He also participated in the Lord's Leelas. He was present when the Lord went to the Kirtan house of, of Sridhar with Kirtan and drank from his iron pot. When the Lord went to see Sridhar, and of course he was present with other pastimes. Uh, it's mentioned here. I know it is. I can't seem to find it in this particular book that I'm reading from here. But it's mentioned who he is um, in Krishna Leela. Uh, let me see if I can find it. He, he is actually a gopi um, in Krishna Leela. Mm -hmm. See, somehow it has escaped my ability to find. Okay. He is a Shaki, a Saki called Sheshi Reka. He became one of the Mahaprabhu's servants. So he was Sheshi Reka in uh, Krishna Lila. So these are some of the stories that we have. And mostly you find Kashivara was always in the role of serving prasadam to the devotees or doing the work of a bodyguard. Many times this was necessary. He would have to, you know, make way and by making sure people didn't crash. It said one time when Lord Chaitanya was doing kirtan, people were coming. So they had to form circles around Lord Chaitanya. Three solid circles of devotees locking hands with uh, each other around Lord Chaitanya with spacing in between each of the circles. Um, I had a personal experience of that at Jagannath Puri in the year 2006 when we were there for the Jagannath Puri Rathayantra. And we were there with Indrajumna Maharaj, with Radhanath Swami, with uh, um, what's his name, Sri, Sri Prahlad, and others. And we were doing kirtan in the middle. I remember it was the, the temperature Fahrenheit was 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was so hot. We were doing kirtan and the devotees had made three circles around us 
so we could continue with the kirtan because the crowds, and it was not easy, the crowds kept trying to break the circles and crashing through. So many times there was a lot of pushing. But we find that that's, uh, that's the way it is sometimes that people just want to come and either join the kirtan or touch your feet or do something. Mahaprabhu had that problem. Therefore, Kashivar performed a very important service for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these two persons, Mugarva Goswami and Kashivara Goswami, uh, today is their disappearance day in the month of Kartik. I like that. To hear about the glories of the great souls is the, actually to glorify the Lord in the best possible way. Uh, the more we hear about the glories of those who are serving the Lord and have made their life uh, the dedicated to that service, then we're actually honoring the Lord in the best possible way. As, a, as the Lord personally says himself, uh, one who says he's my servant is not my servant, and one who says he's a servant of my servant is actually my servant. So to become the servant of the Lord means to become servant of the Lord's devotees who are fixed in serving him. And of course, Srila Prabhupada has extended this principle to its uh, complete understanding where he would say that uh, the more you become the servant of the devotees, the more you become recognized by Krishna. And he would say, das, das, anudas, a hundred times removed. So our position is to serve, and we are, you know, Jivar Surupai Krishna and Nityadas, as the Shastras clearly point out, that there's no, no other identity of the living entity than the servant of the Supreme Personality of God. And eternally, that eternal position is never overshadowed by anything else. Although when we come to the material world, we forget about that. And therefore we take up service to, to so many things in this material world. And uh, we become expert at those things. And sometimes forget or neglect our service to the Supreme Lord. But that is the most important thing. But as we mentioned, service to the Supreme Lord is, reaches its perfection through service of the devotees. Just like when, when Mahaprabhu was, uh, he wanted to, well actually it was King Prataparuta, who was the king at the time when Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri. He was a very, not only pious king, but he was also a devotee of the Lord. So much so that he was always hankering for the uh, association of Lord Chaitanya. And as the Chaitanya Charitamrita very detailedly describes, many times he tried to get the association of Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya was very strict as a sannyasi. And he would say, if a sannyasi associates with worldly people, he becomes fallen. And then he quoted one verse in that relationship. So mm, it was very difficult and practically impossible, although he tried through Nityananda, he tried through Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya to get the association of Lord Chaitanya, but Lord Chaitanya would not grant that association. But then there was a plan that during the Rathayatra, um, that uh, Sarvabhoma would get the chance to see the Lord. So Sarvabhoma, I'm mean, sorry, not Sarvabhoma, I'm sorry, but King Prataparuda would get to see the Lord. So he was the actual person who started through the, the tradition which we follow today, is that when the carts were there with Lord Jagannath, he took a broom and started sweeping the front part of the cart. And then, of course, he swept for a, quite a long time. 
And of course, that's followed today in our Ratha Yatra programs and even around the world. We find that that uh, humble service really uh, endeared Pataparuja to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya noticed that. And he gave King Pataparuja a special mercy that he didn't give to anyone else. And during that Ratha Yatra ceremony, Lord Chaitanya divided his uh, devotees into seven groups with kirtan leaders in each group and kirtan dancers, or leaders, I'm sorry, dancers in the kirtan in each group. So there was, in every kirtan, it is understood there should be a lead singer and a lead dancer. So, and Mahaprabhu performed some mystic power during that kirtan. Something that only two people could see. And that was that Mahaprabhu was dancing in all seven groups at the same time. And of course, everyone was seeing that he was dancing in the group that they could sit, were in. So each group were thinking, well, how fortunate we are to have the association of Lord Chaitanya. He is dancing in our group. But actually, he had expanded himself into seven and was dancing in each of the seven groups. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya could see that. The Lord gave him special vision to be able to see his transcendental pastimes of appearing in seven groups at the same time performing kirtan. And of course, one other person, Lord Nityananda, also could see that. And Lord Nityananda said to Sarvabhoma, um, to King Prataparuja, you are very fortunate to have to be able to see this darshan, very rare darshan. After the Ratha Yatra had commenced and the Lord had reached the Gundicha temple, um, Lord Chaitanya went into the Totem Gopinath gardens to, I mean, the gardens of, uh, near the uh, temple to rest. The Lord was very, very uh, exhausted after dancing in Kirtan for hours. So he went to rest and he lay down. Well, now he didn't lay down, but he sat down with his legs straight out. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said to King Prataparuja, here is your chance. So taking off his royal garments and putting on very simple uh, clothes uh, in white dress, he came. And he came where Lord Chaitanya was, and he started to massage the legs of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was so tired that he didn't even recognize or even try to recognize who was doing it. And then he started to sing that famous song, Tavakatam Ritam Taptajivanam Itiri Sambitam. Uh, song is a verse from the 10th canto which glorifies how great the devotees of the Lord are that they sacrifice everything in order to show mercy to the conditioned souls. It's a beautiful verse spoken by the gopis and so King Prataparuja started to sing that beautiful beautiful song. That song became famous in this kind by Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, who recorded it and would sing it many times in Kirtan and, and in Bhajan. Tavakatam Ritam Tapjivanam Iti. I can't remember the exact verse. It's in the 10th canto, I believe 29th chapter of the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. And so he, and then he was massaging the legs. And then after some time, Lord Chaitanya became, yeah, Kavi, Kavi Diritam Kamadhat Taparam, 
Tava katam vitam tapta jivinam kavi viri dam kamal sapaham sravada mangalam srima atatam buriganatiye burida janam. Translation The nectar of your words and the descriptions, let me see here of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in the material world. These narrations transmitted by learned sages eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon whoever hears them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power. Certainly those who spread the message of Godhead are most munificent. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.31.9, so this was a, uh, the verse that was sung by King Prachaparuja. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he said, who are you? Who are you? He was still like, like what they say, Lord Chaitanya would, would manifest three different types of consciousness. Internal consciousness, where he was completely absorbed in Krishna Leela. External consciousness, when he was functioning on the external level. Half internal and half external. So now he's speaking, who are you? And King Prataparudra responded in such a wonderful way that the Lord became very inclined to give him his complete mercy. And he said, I am the most humble servant of the servant of the servant of your servants. And that's how he answered Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, the Lord was very, very pleased. So we see from this particular pastime with King Prataparud and Lord Chaitanya, although he couldn't get the association of the Lord, he earned the association of the Lord by his humble demeanor and his loving service. So that pleased Lord Chaitanya very, very much. Like that. So the point that we are coming to with in relationship to this particular story is how uh, Dear, one becomes to the Lord in the mood of the humble servant of the Lord by serving the Vaishnavas. <laughs> uh, that's our position, actually, servant. We cannot be anything else. Even the materialists who appear and act like they are servant of a no one are always serving something, either they're society, their country, their family, as Prabhupada would go on and say, even if they don't have anyone to serve, they take up a pet dog or some, some animal to serve. <clears throat> and of course, they're serving their own minds also. That's another form of service. So the living entity is by nature a servant. <laughs> and when we act in that role, we are uh, actually reaching the stage of perfection. In other words, when we try to become master, controller, <clears throat> then we find ourselves always struggling and difficult. But when we are in the mood of service, <clears throat> and especially in the mood of serving those who serve the Lord, and then we find that this resonates and we feel peaceful, happy, satisfied, and have many opportunities to, to uh, then we can actually chant the holy names of the Lord in this mood. As Lord Chaitanya is famous for saying the Shikshastikam prayers, the only prayers that he ever wrote down. Uh, the third verse of the Shikshastikam prayers is considered to be the king of all verses. Trinadapi Sunice na Dayori Vasa Hishnuna Amani na Mamana De na Kirtaniya Sadarahi. The last line Kirtaniya Sadarahi 
Siddha means always. When one who practices these principles, humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and respect for others, then one can chant the holy names constantly. The holy name becomes easily available to such a person who cultivates the mood of this verse. And as Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, that one should take this verse and string it on the necklace of the holy name and wear it as one's ornament. <clears throat> so he takes the verse even farther by saying, one who, one who is practicing this, this becomes their ornament. An ornament is an is a object that is noticed by everyone. When you wear, sometimes ladies, they wear these beautiful brooches around their neck, some necklace, or maybe they wear some flower garlands. The devotees wear flower. In other words, if you have an outstanding ornament, everyone notices it. So the ornament of a Vaishnava is his mood of service, which is glorified here by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so in order to get the mercy of the Lord, this is the formula. And of course, all of Lord Chaitanya's devotees were very much in that mood. They were always serving the Lord and serving those who were serving the Lord. <clears throat> and although Kashivara came from a very respectable family and uh, was the God brother of Lord Chaitanya. He never said, well, I'm the God brother of Lord Chaitanya. How can I serve Lord Chaitanya? No, he took the instructions of Ishwar Puri on his head and made it his life and soul to serve Lord Chaitanya in the role of being his personal bodyguard. Okay, so this is a few things about Kashivar Pandit. And uh, as we mentioned, there is hardly anything, very little about Bhugarbha Goswami. If you go to Vrindavan and you go to Radha Gokulananda Temple, you can see that I think there's three Samadhi Mandirs in the courtyard. I know Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Samadhi Mandir is there, along with Bhugarbha Goswami. I think maybe also Lokanath Das Goswami's Samadhi Mandir, because Lokanath Das Goswami and Bhugarbha Goswami, sometimes they say they were like one soul and two bodies. They were inseparable close friends in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so um, this is what we'll talk about today. And so, yeah. The Gokulananda Temple, let's see. Yeah. Samadhi of Lokanath Das Goswami and anything else in there? Let's see, it also mentions yeah, Samadhi of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and the Samadhi of Ganga Narayan Chakravarti also is there, like that. I'm pretty sure Bhugarbha Goswami's Samadhi is also there. Um, let's see. In fact, I'm quite sure, but go ahead, keep going down the list, maybe you'll find more. Samadhi of It's a very, yeah. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's in the Radha Damodar temple. 
Okay, that was my mistake. It's in Sri Sri Radha Dhammadar Temple. Okay. It's also near Rupa Goswami. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So, uh, anyone would like to comment or pose a question? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Sri Da Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, I understand uh, what you mentioned that it's uh, very important to to serve the devotees, and uh, just this question came into my mind that uh, how should we uh, relate uh, in our service to different type of uh, devotees because. Uh, it may be based on spiritual level, but also based on position or, or on a certain type of relationship. Uh, okay, bring up the verse 4834 from Bhagavatam. Post it on the screen, whoever is doing the... Uh, Share screen, post that verse 4834. Yeah. What does it say? Mm -hmm. uh, someone can read? Uh, I, I can read it. Uh, every man should act like this. When he meets a person more qualified than himself, he should be very pleased. When he meets someone less qualified uh, than himself, he should be compassionate toward him. Uh, and when he meets someone equal to himself, he should make friendship, friendship with him. In this way, one is never affected by the threefold miseries of this material world. Mm -hmm. So we also apply that, like that. So someone who is more advanced, uh, we hear from them and offer service. Someone is equal, we make friends and share Krishna consciousness. Someone who is in a lesser position, we try to raise them up by inspiring them in their practice of Krishna consciousness. That's a general principle, but you can serve anybody at any time according to the situation that arises. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. This is Sundari Radhika Maharaj. Very nice to hear from you after a long time. <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's nice to see the um, details of Prataparudra's pastime with Lord Chaitanya. How um, Lord Chaitanya liked uh, the fact that he wants to be the servant of servant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that was King Pachaparudra, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the best in all positions. <laughs> but the world works in the opposite way, where it teaches you, you should, your success is by how much you can be master and not how much you become servant. So, and that is ingrained. And with the competitive spirit of the material energy pushing us in different areas of life, we're always competing for things and for positions. Uh, when we come to Krishna consciousness, uh, we find that there we, it's a whole different change of attitude based on the mindset that we are serving. <laughs> We can't be anything else but servant. <laughs> um, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj was asked, 
He was asked this question twice and he has answered it twice in two different ways. He was asked, how many disciples do you have, Maharaj? He says, I don't have any disciples. They're all my masters. I learned something from each of them. Um, when he was asked again, uh, how many disciples do you have, Guru Maharaj? I mean, Maharaj. He said, well, I have four, two arms and two legs. They carry out my orders. <laughs> So he put a little humor in that one. <laughs> so a devotee never says, when someone asks you how many disciples or how many servants you are, you always say, Prabhupada also. One from Prabhupada said, he said this through this, this, his disciples. He said, I'm seeing all of you as the representatives of my spiritual master. Because he has given me this service to spread Krishna consciousness around the world, he has also assisted me in my service by sending uh, all of you to assist me. Therefore, you are all representatives of my spiritual master. So in other words, he was serving his spiritual master by serving his disciples. That was Prabhupada's vision for his disciples. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Nice to see you. Where's your daughter? She's here. <laughs> She's there, Maharaj. She was just bathing the deities. She's <laughs> hiding now. Huh? <laughs> I'll call her to come. She's always asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, don't know where she is. <laughs> well, that's okay. Just tell her I... I uh, Offer my respects. Thank you, Maharaj, for being so kind to her and to us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. This is Shyamagori here. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class. And it's very nice to hear about the personalities. They appeared and disappear on their day. If we remember then, then we will, you know, um, make some progress in our spiritual life. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Very nice. Thank you for organizing this wonderful opportunity to speak about the Lord and the devotees. It's very rare we get chances to speak in such, you know, with such a nice audience. So it's, uh, it's our good fortune. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Very, very nice class. And hey, Krishna, very nicely you have explained everything about the pastimes and position of a servant of the servant is the best position for all us. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Please bless me that I can come to that stage. You may, you may have a seat, but in your saying, being humble, you're presenting to us like that. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Mother Komadaki. Komadaki? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu Maharaj. Very, very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, uh, devotees. Anybody has any question or want to say something to Maharaj? They can go ahead. We have a few minutes. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. 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 Hare Krish
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful session on uh, Pratipudra King. I, I always have this question about him that, you know, he was so much devoted to uh, Lord Chaitanya, but uh, uh, Lord uh, tested him so much, like uh, till at the end, uh, um, a king sent so many uh, devotees, uh, Bhattacharya, everyone um, was talking about, um, about the king to Lord. And uh, Lord gave him darshan at um, Rathyatra. So I wanted to ask you, like, uh, like Lord knowing himself, uh, the heart of king already, uh, how come uh, and why was king tested so much? Well, the Lord was following the etiquette. He didn't want to meet him because he's a sannyasi and he didn't want to associate with uh, worldly people being in the role of a king. The Lord even, co even composed a verse based on that. But at the same time, the Lord was, was making the arrangement at the right time. If you want things to immediately happen, then you are, uh, you find yourself in difficulty both in material life and in spiritual life. One of the qualities of a devotee is they endeavor with determination and patience. One of the principal, main principles taught by Rupa Goswami is learning how to be patient and giving our utmost in devotional service and waiting for the mercy of the Lord to descend. The mercy of the Lord will descend by our enthusiasm and our determination but in executing devotional service according to the instructions of our spirit. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. That was very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Shri Maharaj. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you so much for illustrating this beautiful example of Tabarudra's mood of being a very humble servant which captured the Lord's heart. Uh, my question is, Service to the devotees is a very exalted uh, position and uh, sometimes we may not be so fortunate as to have the association of Vaishnavas or to be with them. What if we are far away and you know, we're just going to work and we are associating mostly with non-devotees? How we can still uh, maintain that internal mood that even though this person in front of me is a non-devotee, somehow... I have to serve him or her also. And then how, what form that service should take? Respect. Mm -hmm. Gentlemanness, ladylikeness, giving respects to others. That's Bhakti Vinod Thakur has given that. And Prabhupada also said, devotee is an ideal uh, gentleman, gentle lady. In other words, they give respects to all. That is the principle of, of interaction with the, with the world. You give respects to all living entities according to the situation. And said respect is shown according to the situation. It's not always shown in the same way. But that's the mood, respect. As you want respect, you should also give respect. Of course, Lord Chaitanya said we should give respect, but not ask for respect. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much for bringing out that point. Hare Krishna. And of course, if you have the opportunity, you can uh, 
speak something or do something that will, that will uh, communicate Krishna consciousness to them. Look for the opportunity and see if you can tell them about Krishna, tell them about the holy name, or just give some prasadam. Something. If that's not, if you're not, if you find yourself not able to do that because of circumstance, then we always give respects to all of us. Because everyone's respectable in the sense that Krishna resides in the heart of all living entities. In that way, we give respect. Some people, by their behavior and their and their position, are not respectable at all. But still, from afar, without associating directly, we keep that mood of respect in the sense that this person, although I would never associate because it would bring me down or cause me distress, still that person is part and parcel of Krishna. Vidya, Vidya, Vinaya, Sampane, Gavi, Havi, what is it? Vidya, Vidya, Vinaya, Sampane, Brahma, Gavi, Hastani, Suni, Chaiva, Sopakecha, Pandita, Samadarshanaha. Uh, a sage sees with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. So from one side to the other, the equal vision, samadarshan, means one sees all living entities not so much by the dress, but by the, their, their actual identity. But on the social and interpersonal levels, we act according to position. And in that position, acting, respect is the, is the mood like that. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful, wonderful class today. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I just feel so um, fortunate to be attending this session. And um, whatever you said in the class today about the mood of the devotee, and which has been um, exemplified through great acharyas and through great devotees, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, it seems to be a very, very long way to go to bring such a big change in the consciousness. But then I was contemplating that in the association of um, great devotees like yourself, the path seems to be achievable. I really, really feel very fortunate um, to have this association. Thank you so much, Mara. Thank you. And we're all grateful, Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha is a life of the Vaishnavas. Chaitanya was discussing with, uh, with um, Ramananda Roy. He asked him, what is the greatest unhappiness? And Ramananda Roy was answering in the role of the teacher. And he said, the greatest unhappiness is um, a separation from the devotee. That's true. Yeah. It's hard to imagine life without devotees now. Yeah, it's very difficult. And of course, now we are restricted in our association, but whatever association we have, we should um, be grateful for that and take advantage of it by uh, rendering service. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Hare, Hare Krishna uh, Maharaj. Uh, Please accept uh, respectful obeisances. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful nectarian class. 
uh, I have a question on this verse, but this is not connected to the class. Uh, is that okay to ask? Of course. Thank you, Maharaj. So, uh, I mean, uh, there are many verses like this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking forgiveness if there is uh, this uh, question is offensive to the uh, Vedic scriptures or uh, Guru Vargas. Um, Mataji, can you go to the translation? Uh, so uh, there are many verses like this. This one I'm just uh, saying about the example and I was not able to answer this question uh, when asked uh, by someone. So the translation goes like this. Their lotus-like faces extraordinarily beautiful uh, being decorated with saffron and newly grown kumkuma. The wives of the cowherd men hurried to the uh, house of Mother Yashoda with presentations in their hands. Because of natural beauty, the wives had full hips and full breasts, which moved as they hurried along. So we um, find many um, verses like this. And uh, the question was, um, is this, uh, this um, looks like too direct and uh, I'm not able to ask this, that it is not, it's not presented in a, I mean, uh, one boy was asking that why is it presented like it, it looks like um, a literature of mundane uh, presentation uh, and uh, so what is uh, our answer for this it's story? just describing the scene as it is like that yeah you'll find a lot of times it's mentioned the beauty of a woman is mentioned in relationship to uh the situation that is there. Mm -hmm. So full hips, breasts, it talks about that in relationship to the gopis also. also. But this is just the beauty of a woman, that's all. It says the woman developed a natural feminine beauty with full hips and breasts because women, what's the next line down? In modern civilization, do not naturally live naturally, and so their their bodies don't develop to natural fullness like that. So when you're healthy, happy, and you live a nice life, then uh, the, your natural beauty doesn't get overshadowed by having a material body. So yeah, and Prabhupada is giving some purport describing the opposite. <laughs> so uh, this is this is Bhagavatam. This is natural life in in contrast to a civilization that exploits women that uh, abuses women, that uh, tries to take advantage of women for their for, sens for sensual stimulation or for sense gratification. So these are these are descriptions of the beauty of women. Natural beauty. Nowadays, people are, are not so beautiful because of the life they live. So they use all kinds of cosmetics and creams, this, that, in order to make themselves beautiful. Sometimes they spend money going to beauty shops. You know, you didn't, uh, you didn't hear so much about that in Krishna's Vrindavan. They went to a beauty parlor to get kind of fixed up so they could look good. Well, but it's mentioned in some of the sh statements that the women would be out there early in the morning and they would be churning butter and doing chores and they worked. And because they were working uh, and uh, enjoying their work as service, uh, they were happy. And because you're happy, your body actually becomes an expression of that happiness. So your natural beauty starts to manifest like that. 
So it's being, their natural beauty is simply being described, that's all. And the, the setting by which the natural beauty is being described is Vrindavan. And the activities that the actual beauty is being described is devotional service. And that devotional service is their love for Mother Yasoda. They came to associate with and assist Mother Yasoda in her service. So one should not think, oh, the beautiful woman should, is something that we, we use, for, we hide to uh, describe something that is um, sensual. No. There is natural beauty there, and you can't deny that. So if this person has trouble, that means his mind is somewhat uh, infected with the sensual descriptions, and he doesn't really see the actual picture of Vrindavan in, its, in it, all its beauty and naturalness. <laughs> Baba said, be, women have lost their natural beauty, although they claim to be independent and advanced in material civilization. The description of village women gives a clear example of the contrast between natural life and the artificial life of a society such, go on, continue to go down, such as the Western, where, whoops, I lost the, the whole thing now, such as such, such as the Western countries where topless, bottomless beauty may be purchased like in clubs and shops for advertisement. This is the word Taritam Jagmu indicates how happy the village women were to understand a mother who Soda had given birth to a wonderful child known as Krishna. Mm -hmm. So God has created everything perfect. And when we mess around with his perfection, then it becomes something ugly. Or what we say, uh, licentious. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And also, I like this, uh, how Srila Prabhupada says the degraded nature of women being exploited uh, the, at the present situation. And, uh, it's a, it's we... like that all around, even with this so-called women's liberation. Prabhupada said women's liberation was created by men to break the chastity of women so they could use women for their sense gratification. Such as cheap labor and, and then, of course, for sensual enjoyment. Prabhupada goes into detail about this and he even spoke to women reporters who came to him in Chicago about this. <coughs> So exploitation is the principle of material life, whereas service is the principle of spiritual life. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, every Friday, you continue to give your very, very invaluable association. And uh, your classes are very instructive and uh, very clear and uh, so many when I we don't have words to explain the effects of uh, uh, association of uh, Vaishnava but just we can say humbly say thank you and please accept our humble obeisances and give us your blessings so that we can follow your instructions Mara. Every everything is by the, coming by the mercy of Prabhupada as Prabhupada used to say people give me so much credit for spreading this Krishna consciousness. But I have no credit. All I know is I'm following the instructions of my spiritual master and I'm trying to do it in the best possible way. He said, that's my credit. So he's teaching us, and this is also a principle for all of us, 
Our success in Krishna consciousness is the instructions of the spiritual master and the desire to carry them out. So thank you, but all glory to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> what else can we say? Because this is the natural understanding. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna, I wanted to know if I could um, add a verse that we just read last night. We're reading, um, it's called uh, The Description of the Kingdom of God, and it's from Ch Canto 3, Chapter 15. Would it be all right with the Maharaj if, if I read the verse, because it's directly relating to the Mataji's question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's Canto 3, Chapter 15, and it's text number 20, and it's called The Description of the Kingdom of God. Text 20. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha travel in their airplanes made of lapis lazuli, emerald, and gold. Although crowded by their consorts, who have large hips and beautiful smiling faces, they cannot be stimulated to passion by their mirth and beautiful charms. Yeah, Prabhupada also speaks that, that because they have a higher taste, the higher taste is their love for Krishna. Although they may associate with each other and both are beautiful, the men are beautiful, the women are beautiful, but there's no passion stimulated. Mm -hmm. Because there's a higher taste. Mm -hmm. And the last line in the purport really gives, you know, the final conclusion. In other words, there is, there is enjoyment of the association of the opposite sex, but no sexual relationship. The residents of Vaikuntha have a better standard of pleasure. So there's no need of sex pleasure. So what is that verse? Um, let me think. What is that verse? Uh, hmm. Well, the verse, the translation is one who, oh, one who has a higher taste can give up the lower taste. You can't give up the lower taste unless you have the higher taste. So material ple pleasure is the higher taste and spiritual pleasure is the, I mean, is the lower taste and spiritual pleasure. Param Jisva Nivartante. Yeah, what, what is that verse again? Rasa Rasavar, oh yeah, Rasavar Jam Raso Prasya Param Jiswa Vivartate. Vishayan Vidyan Vishayan Vidivartante Niharasya Dehinam Raso Varjam Raso Pyasya Param Jiswa Divartante. 259 in the Bhagavad Gita. So you can't give up the lower taste because taste is life. Life means taste. So people are chasing after material tastes. And sex life is the highest form of material taste in the material world. But that becomes puny, or what we say insignificant, in relationship to the taste of devotional service. <laughs> so one cannot give up the attraction to the opposite sex unless one is fixed in attraction to Krishna like that. So the whole world is going on with this material attraction, but the devotees are developing attraction for Krishna and they're losing their attraction for the uh, smaller attractions in this material world. In fact, what's his name? Uh, one great sadhu, um, uh, Jamunacharya. Jamunacharya was a great uh, acharya. He was the spiritual master of Ramanujacharya. And uh, he enjoyed royal opulence as a king. In a debate when he was 12 years old, he won a part of a kingdom and became a king. As a king, he was quite licentious and uh, he was enjoying all kinds of material uh, sense pleasure, especially sex life. 
after he became purified from that situation and attained self-realization, he writes one verse which Prabhupada uh, speaks about all the time. I don't know where the, it's, it's simply a verse from Jamunacharya's Stotra, I think it's Stotra Ratna by Jamunacharya, which says, um, uh, now that I have engaged in devotional service unto your lotus feet, my Lord, when I think of sex life, my lips curl in disgust, and Prabhupada says, I spite upon it. <laughs> he uses the word spite, meaning spit. In other words, one gets actually feels repugnant towards material sense gratification once they start to regularly taste the happiness of devotional service. So that is our goal, to, to get that higher taste, because if you don't get the higher taste, you have to taste something. And as long as that higher taste is not given, it becomes hard to resist material tastes. So uh, one can somewhat reframe themselves. Yeah, there he is. Uh, and so there's the verse. So we have to get that higher taste. <laughs> we have to go for the higher taste. Higher taste comes by devotional service. Higher taste comes by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Higher taste comes by serving the Vaishnavas. So Krishna consciousness is the higher taste. As we read from that verse from the 15th chapter, that although these personalities are surrounded by so much uh, opportunities for sense gratification, they're not even interested. <laughs> it becomes something that is not even noticeable. So this is the this is the consciousness of one who's fixed in Krishna consciousness. They may be around sense objects, but they're not attracted to them. Yeah. I can tell you another story. Would you like to hear another one? Yes, please. Yes, Maharaj. You sure? This is the life of Srila Prabhupada. So we know Srila Prabhupada is fixed in Krishna consciousness. He's transcendental to everything. Uh, and so one reporter to meet Prabhupada at the airport in New York when Prabhupada arrived, the devotees becoming very enthusiastic. They uh, brought a on for Prabhupada to sit on at the airport. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, Sometimes the devotees would act like that, wanting to serve Prabhupada. Uh, and it wasn't the actual protocol to bring a Vyasa son to the airport, but they did. <laughs> and since they did, Prabhupada sat on it. And then there were reporters and they, he was taking questions. And so one reporter, he was feeling a little envious towards Prabhupada. And he couldn't re restrain his envious nature. So in a very uh, obvious way, he said, why do you have to sit on that fancy seat? Now, Prabhupada could have answered that, uh, that uh, criticism in so many different ways. But he answered it in the most interesting way. And uh, there were many other reporters there also. So he said, well, the difference between you and me is I can be in a room full of naked women and not be disturbed. <laughs> and then all of his, uh, the reporter's uh, colleagues, they all started to laugh at the reporter. And he, what could he say? He was embarrassed. And because Prabhupada said it in such a way that it went, it went right to the point, you know. 
Prabhupada didn't want to brag about himself, but he wanted to make a point that for the pure devotee spiritual master, uh, you can't do uh, enough to glorify that pure devotee spiritual master. He said that's the business of the disciples to always to figure out how to, to worship and honor their spiritual master. So when it came to Prabhupada, they were always thinking different ways to please Srila Prabhupada or glorify Prabhupada. So Prabhupada wanted to make a point so, but the point was that, yeah, the more one becomes fixed in devotional service, the more that one sees this world, the, you know, garbage. <laughs> We're trying to reach that stage where we come to that point. None of us should claim we're on that stage. Prabhupada could because Prabhupada was a Nitya Siddha and he knew his position. He knew who he was. He knew why he came to this material world to do this work. But we, who are followers of Srila Prabhupada, shouldn't claim to be or even think we are on that level. We should be very careful in the association of the material energy because even great devotees can fall down, even from a very high stage of bhakti. So a devotee. Uh, is very uh, aware that at any time I could fall down. Uh, Prabhupada also gave us uh, a little instruction in that regard. One time he was sitting with his disciples and he said, I'm simply praying to Krishna that I, I, I don't fall down in my devotional service. So he was teaching us that we should always be in that mood. Please, Krishna, save me from the allurements of this material world. And if you worship Lord Nishringadev specifically, Lord Nishringadev gives you three benedictions through, the, through sincere worship. One, as he, he protects against material dangers. Two, he removes fruit of activities within the heart of the devotee. And three, uh, reveals material illusions. He destroys material illusions. So the objects of this material world who present itself as forms of enjoyment are simply material illusions. So by the mercy of Lord Nisringadev, one can be able to overcome these illusions but one still has to understand that whatever I can do in Krishna consciousness is simply the mercy of the Lord, the mercy of the, my spiritual master. But when it comes to the opposite sex, one should be very careful in that association because even great devotees become victimized and sometimes uh, act wrongly or sometimes even fall down. So that happens. So therefore it says that uh, one should never think themselves free from the allurements of material energy and should always be in the mood of praying that please my dear Lord, don't let me fall down. Don't let me become attracted. Because as soon as attraction develops, then the mind starts to change. When the mind starts to change, then one starts to forget about Krishna and starts to contemplate the objects of the senses. And as the verse says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dayatayam Vishayam Pumsam Teishad Sangat Sanjayate Teishad Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kama Krota Vijayate Krota Bhavati Samoham Samoham Sriti Vribhava Shriti Brahmsa, Bhudinasa, Bhudinasa, Panashyati. Panashyati means fall down. So, Dayate Visayam Pumsam, one who contemplates material sense objects, from that lust comes, from lust, um, anger, from anger, delusion, from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memories and law is, is lost, when memory, uh, when delusion of forgetfulness is there, intelligence is lost, when intelligence is lost, and one falls down again into the material world, Panashati, yeah, 262 and 263. Uh, Goldberg. Uh, Goldberg.
two is the first verse. Yeah. The verse before that, 262. While contemplating out and send a person develops attachment for them, from such attachment lust arise, from lust anger, from anger complete delusion, from delusion bewildered, when memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, intelligence is lost, one falls down in the material world. Cool. So intelligence is our protecting factor. As Rupa Goswami explains, the connection between the soul and Krishna is through the intelligence. So the intelligence means to apply the instructions of the spiritual master in each and every situation. And that becomes our driving force, our vision for activity and our protection in this material world. So sometimes devotees will say, well, I'm not so intelligent, what do I do? Uh, well, Prabhupada would say, then get some intelligence. Go find someone and get it. <laughs> Prabhupada would say like that. Or he would say, intelligence means to understand the instructions of the spiritual master and understand how to apply them. Then one is on the platform of intelligence. So thank you from that verse from the 15th chapter. It's one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bhagavatam describing the kingdom of God. It's so descriptive of the of Vaikuntha. Okay, anything else? Thank you, Maharaj. Really nice discussion. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. If no one has any questions for Maharaj, we can end now. Let's pay obeisances to Maharaj and all the devotees. Vancha Kalpata Rubhyasya Krupa Krupa Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. My obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Thank Hare you. Krishna, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Dhanvat Pranam. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. This was so enlightening. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for a very beautiful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Madam. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Yeah.